Silver Joker here. Okay, so it's been a couple weeks since I made a video. There's a reason for that. I've been out of town for the past couple weeks. Had some business we had to take care of. That business has concluded very favorably, I'd like to add. But before I left, I watched a video that my good friend T.D. Silverstacker posted where he talked to his local coin store owner, Sherry, about an issue that some local coin store owners were having with their bank accounts being closed by their bank. And the speculation for this, at least in the comments on that video, was that it was the nature of her business or the nature of the business of buying and selling precious metals. And so I went down, talked to Phil when I came back, completed that. So this may be a little bit old news <laughs> right now, at least a couple weeks old. So anyway, so I want you guys to watch that, hear what he had to say, and then I'll talk to you guys on the other side. I've not heard of that, and fortunately, we haven't had any issues, you know, from our particular banks. Um, typically, on on those type of you know closures, there's usually a reason as to why they close. They probably aren't targeting her as a what she's selling. It, it might be the type of business model that she has, whether there's large cash withdrawals or deposits. Right. Um, I don't think anybody's worried about selling silver and gold. I mean, you see it being sold on eBay, through Atmex, through a lot of these mm -hmm. gold lines. Through, there's numerous large silver and gold sellers and buyers um, on a daily basis that if they were targeting silver and gold buyers and sellers, I would think that they would target the big people first. Ah, uh, I see what you're saying. Like um, Atmex or J and Bullion yes, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, right? um, if they were trying to actually exclude the public from being able to uh, buy silver and gold, I think that would be the place to start. Right. Uh, not to give them any ideas. Right. <laughs> and just to be fair, we don't know yeah. exactly I what. I don't know the circumstances. Right. Either. We don't know the circumstances. I mean, we only go by what but you know. She talked to about diffuse the, the fact that you know the, there's going to be you know a, a, a crackdown on on bullion dealers, I would think that if that was going to occur, that certainly um, the larger bullion dealers mm. in the country would be targeted first because That's a good it would point. affect a huge amount of people versus a small much smaller amount of people by targeting smaller independent you know right. brokers of silver and gold. I don't about think it's the about the bullion. Right. I think it's about the business model or whatever was transpiring into the account only because um, not to say there was any wrongdoing. Right. I'm just saying that um, I don't think they they pulled up the account and say here's a gold and silver and rare coin dealer we ah, need to I get see. rid of them. I think what happens is you know, when there's a lot of activity in an account where a bank has to make certain reports going on on certain accounts, especially smaller banks, um, yes, everything's legit, but they yeah. still have the red flags. Right. And why why I, draw I, draw the attention? And that's exactly it. I think it's, it's mm -hmm. drawn attention to some of these banks, and I, I really believe that they're they're to the point where it's like there's enough issues going on with the banking industry yes, right especially now. Lately, we yeah. don't need additional red flags. You know, so any account that's doing that to us um regardless of what they put in what they take out mm -hmm. it's just to us it's a better deal not to deal with them so right. i think that's what probably that would i would think be my speculation on the whole thing the problem is with putting large sums of money in you also realize they're also spending large sums of money so the bank ends up only being kind of a clearing house for them mm. they're not taking advantage of large deposits from these companies or small businesses that are putting money into their bank they're not being able these companies aren't buying cds from the bank they're not right. investing so mm. the bank doesn't really have use of all that money it simply comes in one day and goes out the next you know in that respect too if they're not able to utilize now if the money was put in there and left in there and and, and they were investing in cds with the bank and things like that there might it might be a different story but i'm thinking that maybe in and out, in and out, in and right. out. That process leads the bank to believe we're not really making out on this deal. I mean, how's it benefiting us? You got all those things mm -hmm. going on in the, in the bank's mind thinking, hey, is it worth it to keep this account? And, you know, you would hope that that was the decision making process, not the fact that it was so hard. Right, so, and, and, you know, I just want to be clear about some things too that this is strictly speculation. I mean, um, the video is out there. Yeah. We saw the video, yeah. and so we're just we're just commenting on the information that was provided in the video. So we don't know all the details. With yeah. certainly not with the bank, and sure, you know, we don't have 
access to her books, <laughs> so we don't know mm. what. But just from what we've seen and what was put out there online, I would hope to you would think say that, that it's not a widespread right, thing. I would it's hope not to think it's not something concerned. that's targeting right. Right. And dealers. And right. I don't say that from just being, you know, because we we sell other things, obviously. Right. But from a bullion standpoint, you wouldn't. You would hope. Um, that it's not because then everybody's a target at that right. point and you just don't know when it's coming yeah, you know it's right. coming but you don't yeah. know when it's coming Absolutely. so you don't want to you don't want to think like that you want to think that there's right. got to be something else and a lot of times in these situations there is something else you just don't have access to right. and you you don't wish the worst but I hope I hope the young lady was able to go out and get another account get mm -hmm. her get her well, it seems like that's what back on track right. and you know move on right. I mean and that's what you really need to do I mean there's hiccups in all businesses especially small businesses and that's what small business owners are very adept to being able to overcome these Absolutely. hiccups and move on with their business I mean right. they're they are very intelligent they're very good at, at, at getting around these obstacles mm -hmm. because things are thrown away all the time and it's like that's what makes a, a small business person yeah. that much better in the future is being able to get over these hurdles and things yeah. like that. So hopefully um, she's okay. Hopefully the, the, the bank that she's currently dealing with now is okay with her and, and things will run smooth for, for them from here on out. Yeah. And But I you have to give credit to the fact that, you know, she seemed, I watched only part of the video, mm. but she seemed like uh, she had control of the situation. Yeah, and that's, that's the whole point of it. It, it didn't devastate her didn't put her out on the street it didn't it didn't do anything to harm her in respect of the fact that you know she was just concerned why yeah. and they wouldn't give her an explanation well, that you know that that's concerning obviously well you know the <laughs> banks it just seems lately are under a lot more scrutiny yes, than they yes, have they been are. in the past mm -hmm. too and so that could be a part of it too but like I, mean, I, I I appreciate your explanation there and your opinion because it makes a lot of sense um, and it's not something that I think we need to be concerned about I mean I don't I don't, you know, buy and sell uh, bullion as a business, so mm -hmm. I'm not mm -hmm. really all that concerned about it. But if it's something to do with bullion trading or buying or selling or whatever, then that does get my attention. You know, I well, definitely yeah, want to. Believe wanna, me, if there becomes a, you know, statute or a law or something that comes out that says, you know, limitations on either purchasing or buying bullion or where you can buy it or how you can buy it certainly everybody would be on top of that yes. so and i have not heard anything in that well, realm good. whatsoever in terms yeah. of you know any type of restrictions so yeah. you would think that would come first and then yeah. this would come second so right. well, well i appreciate your opinion yeah. on that uh bill i'm gonna go ahead and um look around maybe okay. <laughs> i'll find something <laughs> that uh that i want to buy these are some really nice bars very tempting you guys see that these are well, of course, you know about Johnson Matthew, but this right here, this U.S. Silver Corp, this is a new one for me. I haven't heard that, of them yeah, before. Yeah, that one is, we've, I don't know if we've seen one in yeah. the past. Uh, it's a poured bar. It's a kind of a loaf type yeah. bar. Um. <laughs> All right, Phil, I appreciate it, man. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. <laughs> All right, well, there you have it. Phil's opinion, his speculation on the information that was presented in T's video that Sherry was very candid and very open with sharing that information with us. And just based on that, I would tend to agree with Phil that it's not a, a targeted action by banks based on the nature of the business and more so with the bank and how they do business. Who knows? I'm not going to be overly concerned about it. Of course, anything that has to do with buying and selling of precious metals, which I do, <laughs> I'm going to be interested in that. I'm going to pay attention to, but I don't think I'm going to be worried about that too much at all. Phil said he hasn't had any issues. And none of the other local corn store owners that he knows has any issues. And so, you know, we're going to leave it right there. But it was a very thought-provoking, very interesting video that he posted. He's got a very good channel. He's always given us information like that that we can digest and think about. And that's what the Silverstein community, at least in my opinion, is all about. Information that we can use. Of course, we want to see silver. Of course, we want to see the different types of stacking and the different strategies, but also we want to have information that we can use personally to better our own stacks. And that's what this is all about. Anyway, I appreciate you guys stopping by. More good content coming up. Keep stacking. Peace.